Now I'm experimenting with drugs, and that's cool, I guess. I recently, uh, I tried cocaine for the first time. You guys cocaine users, it's... I'm not a narc. Don't let the top button fool you. I like to party. Uh, I tried cocaine for the first time. I found out I don't like it at all. Uh, in my opinion, doing cocaine is a lot like pissing your pants, right? Because, like, for the first 30 seconds afterwards, your body feels all warm, and you feel so good about that decision, right? And you're like, this is what I need to be doing right now, right? And then, like, 30 seconds go by, and you start to get cold. Uh, and then you realize you're alone. And then you're like, why did I do this on the bus? I don't even... I don't even like smoking weed that much anymore because I get paranoid. Like stereotypical seventh grade, I'm in the basement, mom's upstairs paranoid, right? Like I was taking bong tokes the other day and I got so paranoid, I had to stop doing my Sudoku puzzle because I was afraid I was helping write code for the Matrix. <laughs> that was a good one. I like that one too. Uh, <laughs> Who's it? You guys, Facebook fans? Facebook? Nobody's ever as excited about that as they should be. Facebook is awesome, guys. Like, finally, we can judge people from the comfort of our own homes. And I think that is an amazing ability, right? Like, I don't even have to put pants on to disapprove of my mom's new boyfriend anymore. It's a total time saver. I, I don't like status updates. I feel like they're, like, people are way too serious about them. You ever notice that people got talking about like heartbreak or their children and shit like that in status updates? And it's super boring and I don't get down like that. I mean like uh, me personally, I like to keep the tricks guessing. Uh, so for my status updates recently, I've just been posting titles from the Maury show, right? <laughs> like today it said, David Bory has slept with over 100 men. Will I ever find my baby's father? <laughs> got like 20 likes, it was incredible. I also don't like that Facebook has bred this weird culture where people can say that they're Facebook stalkers now. Have you heard that? I'm a Facebook stalker. Have you heard that term? You haven't heard that term? You're not on Facebook enough then. I see you, curly blonde hair. You're out in the world. You're not on Facebook like me. I get it. You're better than me? You think you're better than me? Because you got store-bought underwear on? You think you're, you think you're doing better? Because you didn't steal the bus ride to get here? That got really confrontational really fast. I'm sorry. I'm sure you're a delightful person. <laughs> I, uh, there are Facebook stalkers, or there are people that say face that they're Facebook stalkers. I was actually on Facebook, surprisingly enough, and this girl was like, I've been Facebook stalking you all day, right? And at first, I was really flattered. And I was like, yeah, this girl's going to let me touch that soft stuff. And I was really into it. <laughs> and then I thought about it, and I was like, wait a second. You arrogant bitch. All right, because it's not fair to just call yourself a Facebook stalker. Like rule number one to stalking is you have to leave your fucking house to do it, right? <laughs> like if you just looked at my Facebook profile for two hours today, you're not a stalker, you're just a boring person, yeah. right? And it's not fair because there's real OG stalkers out there, guys, with knuckle tattoos. Like right now, there's some guy, and he's outside of the bushes in Lady Gaga's hotel in Luxembourg, right? And he's there because it's the 26th of the month, and he knows that that's when she menstruates, right? And he's waiting, he's waiting for her housekeeper to take out the trash, and he's gonna rifle through that trash like he has the last six months of the Glitter World tour, and he's gonna take out a tampon, and he's gonna put it in his fanny pack, all right? And he's gonna fly back to Detroit or Cleveland, or whatever other shit city breed stalkers, I don't know where they come from, and he's gonna take out all these tampons that he's collected over the year, and he's gonna melt them down, and he's gonna shoot them into his veins, because he knows that that's o the only way that he'll have a piece of her with him everywhere he goes. That's a real stalker, guys. <laughs> that girl was just boring. <laughs> I, uh, do you guys work? Are you, are you guys employed? You're an artist. That's not a job. I'm an artist, too. It doesn't even get you laid. I don't know why I'm doing this. This is, this is my art, guys. You guys paint things. I just beat off. It's very, you know, I'm going to stop doing that. I don't know why I keep going to this. This is my comfort zone for this set right now. <laughs> I, 
I am unemployed, though. I used to have a job. I used to work in an office, uh, which is the fucking worst. Are there any of you guys office workers? Yeah? yeah? Who's the, raise your hand. That's always the saddest hand raise in the audience. Like, I can, I can look at you, and I can tell that you're like eight sick days away from suicide. I can just feel it, because office work is the worst. It's soul-crushing, right? And there's only one highlight to it. I think we both know it. Uh, cake day, right? Are you a fan? That's the best day in the office. Like, I used to plan my days off around it. Like, cake day is the best. And I remember one time we were having cake day in my office, and I was getting down, I was doing my thing. Well, I was, I was eating like a person eats. I'm not a fucking animal. And uh, I was eating, and my boss comes up to me, and she's like, David, <laughs> look, I see you're enjoying the cake. Who wouldn't chocoholic right here? But you have to slow down and make sure there's enough for everybody. <laughs> she said that to my fucking face. <laughs> I'm confrontational. I'm not a punk. I'm not going to take that. So I stood up and I was like, you know what? Fuck you, Linda. <laughs> At the office Christmas party, you got drunk and gave out like eight blowjobs. Was there enough for everybody to go around then? No, there was not, because I was ninth in line. <laughs> then I dipped my nuts in the punch bowl and walked out. What's up? <laughs> and now I'm poor, <laughs> doing this for you guys on a Saturday. <laughs> Being poor isn't bad. I sort of think I deserve to be poor sometimes. I think I deserve it, because when I would get my paychecks at my last job, I would go from being a broke nothing and acting accordingly to acting like I was daddy fucking Warbucks. Like that 860 bucks would change my whole outlook on life. And I would go about normal things that I would usually do, but I would just be an asshole on payday, right? Like I would go, I would go to the store to get cigarettes where I usually go, and the guy would be like, oh David, you want a pack of USA Gold menthols? And I'd be like, fuck no, Amir, I want Newports. Can't you tell I'm balling? Generic cigarettes are for peasants. <laughs> now I'm poor, so if I want to smoke a menthol, I gotta like drink some mouthwash and smoke a Marlboro Red I found in the gutter. Cause I'm about that life. <laughs> so you guys, I've uh, been trying to get laid a lot more recently. Huh? First thing I'm gonna quit doing is this. They don't, it's very intrusive. You don't want me to do this, it's terrible, right? It's very uncomfortable. This is uncomfortable for you. No? You're into it? What are you doing after this? <laughs> we could do this all night. I can keep this up all night. I have no stamina issues. <laughs> I am trying to get laid a lot more recently. Not by you. This is a weird... I feel like we're getting off on a weird foot now. I'm not trying to get laid by you more recently. I gave up on that years ago. Because uh, I've been following you. It's not a big deal. I like the way you smell. You wanna just like hold me for a second? No? Okay, this is why it's hard for me to get laid, guys. I have a few ideas though that I think are pretty good uh, about getting laid. My first one is I went to Craigslist Casual Encounters. Have you guys been there? It's the fucking, it's like the hunter's point of the internet. You know what I mean? It's the fucking worst. And I went on there, I went to the male to female uh, section to see like what my competition is doing. And I don't know if you guys are up on this, but it's literally just pictures of dicks and then stats about those dicks underneath. That's all it is, just dick stats, dick stats. Like a bunch of sexy baseball cards for pages, for pages. But I'm a gentleman, uh, so I threw my hat into the ring. Uh, and for layman, that means I put my dick online. <laughs> and the problem with writing stats about my penis is halfway through writing about it, I realized it would sound way more attractive in the auto section, right? Because it was, it was a picture of my dick, and then underneath it said, like, mid-80s luxury sedan, garaged most of its life, only one previous owner, a little old lady who never drove it in the snow. That one might actually work. I might get laid off of that one. I have some other backup options, though. I, uh, I listen to a lot of rap music. You guys are a rap crowd, I can tell, right? Because of all the black people in here. Uh, 
I listen to a lot of rap music, and uh, rap music has these things called mixtapes. And you don't need to know anything about mixtapes. All you need to know about a mixtape is that the rapper goes on and he says something cool, and then the mixtape DJ goes on and he says fucking nonsense, right? So rapper says something cool, and then the DJ's just like, yeah, yeah, Desert Storm Volume 3, black, black, woo, woo. Like fucking nonsense, right? It's nonsense. But I started thinking, like, what a great way to get a woman's attention if I were to just speak to her in that voice, right? Like at a bar or something, a girl comes up and I'm just like, hey, girl. You know what it is? Life from my mom's basement. Subpar sexual experience, volume one. We got BART tickets. The only way I'd be any cooler is if I had an actual DJ with me, like, at all times, right? Like, and a girl's like, what do you do for fun? And I just point to the DJ, and he's like, Laugh Master D, dribbling hot giggles for that ass, girl. <laughs> and then a fog machine starts up because I'm a fucking baller. <sighs> I, think, I think I know my issue, though. I think it's that I'm too broke uh, to date women my own age. Yeah, I'm too broke for it. I met some girls my own age the other day. And they were like, oh, you want to hang out tomorrow? We can go to like a cafe and get some mimosas. It's going to be a really good time, right? And I was like, I had to be like, listen, I don't know about mimosas, but I have like a box of wine and some tang at my house. Let's just cut out the middleman and get busy, right? They weren't into it. So I went to younger girls. I think uh, my grandpa taught me a saying about younger girls. And you guys, actually, you guys, your grandpa's probably taught you this as well, uh, guys in here. So say it along if you know it, all right? The younger the berry, the cheaper the juice. <laughs> Nobody's grandfather was a pimp. <laughs> all right, all right, it's just me, I'll live. Uh, so I used that tactic, and I got a younger girl. I actually got an 18-year-old white girl. Yeah, no, because that's a weird thing. You can clap for that. That's very strange, right? And I got this girl, and I remember one time we're making out in the back of her Toyota, white, uh, her Toyota Corolla, because she's a white girl, and that's what they drive. And uh, we we started making out, and she started dirty talking me. Right? You guys, you guys dirty talk when you're having sex with ladies or men or whoever you have sex with. Yeah, she was doing it, and it was crazy. She was saying the you guys, she was saying the craziest shit. It was like she was just like, oh, David. Touch that stuff that you like to touch on my body. It's so hot. Don't you fucking judge her. If you were there, it would have been sexy at the time, all right? Don't you judge her. Don't fucking judge her. And, uh, but she was, she was saying all this stuff. And my issue with Dirty Talk is that I'm just super excited to be having a sexual experience anyways, right? So instead of saying something cool like Lexington Steel would have said, I was just like, hold the flaps back, mama. I'm trying to get wiggly. And then I vomited anywhere. <laughs> then she cleaned it up because she's an 18-year-old white girl. Hey, you guys, that's been my time. My name is David Bory. I appreciate it so much. Andrew Roberts is here. He's a very funny man. <laughs>